And welcome back to uh, that is a very black to the final screen. act of Police Knots. Oh, yeah. yeah, that answers my question there for the last part. It was they were in, they were in at that pod for a week. Um, not to uh, like draw some hot signs, but at some stage, atrophy would kick in there because you're literally sitting in a box for six days. That's not good for your legs. Damn! <laughs> I'm shocked that, that that something terrible has happened to our family six days in deep space. Oh my god, they rolled the mark. Come to AMM. Maku! Makaru. So, I'll give you one guess who, who's kidnapped Mark. <laughs> Do we know anyone who seems to write his messages in white blood? <laughs> I couldn't possibly venture to guess. No, could be anybody. Could be any android that we know of. That's the best part about this game. It's not predictable. No, not at all. <laughs> it's definitely not a very linear story with no possible other suspects. Yes, we with our power our of the <laughs> with the power of the media, we can help find a kidnapper. Look at that! Look at the celebrations here. We've thrown an actual party for this kidnapper. <laughs> I'm not sure what kind of fireworks there are, but I presume they're drones. I like to think that Jonathan got like a press pass for this exact purpose, you know, even though he's still like a wanted criminal and <laughs> would be relatively visible in a, uh, in a BBC like, you know, media van, considering coincidentally it was a BBC van that broke him out of prison to begin with <laughs> he's still walking around with his badge on yeah but that's that, that's what i find so funny because like that's his badge from like from old los angeles and i think like earlier on we saw there was a guy on the tr on the train who was dressed like him you know so by all accounts people just think he's cosplaying as jonathan ingram without realizing <laughs> it's actually him which i think is hilarious like <laughs> I love the how low tech this is in the year 2040, but they have to still, they've only got four feeds for eight cameras, so they still have to switch between the two, you know. So, um, if, you, if you know a better way. Well, eight feeds would be nice, yeah. <laughs> not a, I'm not a rocket scientist now or anything, but like, you know, more screens would be good. But yeah, that's a... This is, this is the, the fun part of, like, you know, someone trying to predict the future while in the 90s, where not quite the, well, the stage you realize that computers going to get, like, smaller and quicker for each generation. Listen, if Back to the Future does anything, it's aim low, because otherwise you're just going to disappoint a whole lot of people. That's very true, like, yeah. When, they don't, I mean, when they don't have their hoverboards. Yeah. I mean, like, famously, the original series of Star Trek was still using fucking, like, cartridges for all their information. Like, putting fucking Game Boy games into the computer. So, so you know. We, they all, we all get things wrong. But um, this this next part of the game, um, Karen's going to explain how it works. But I, I like to call the section the Kevin Dunn Simulator. I was going to say, you know something, I, I would cut it slack, but Star Trek is just objectively bad. Mm. Um, but then I didn't say it because I was afraid you'd just suddenly get a call and just Jerry would appear. Or <laughs> <laughs> just chatting shit, pal. <laughs> no, no, that's fair. And I'm really not in the mood for a Jerry promo right now. No, 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 you don't want, to, you don't want that uh, on your conscience. Ooh. 
So yeah, that's literally what this is. That you're basically switching between screens and seeing if anything's changed, essentially. Um, I don't believe it's time sensitive, but there is a, a kind of a, a sequence you have to follow. And um, I don't know if you can game over at this part of the game. I think you can. I think if you miss the actual the big event, then it's game over. But um, really? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, not too sure now. It's just like I've done this. I've, I've played through this I kind of from the times. layout of this game. I just kind of assumed you couldn't really game over except for the like gun parts. Yeah, the gun parts definitely. Um, and the bomb section is like a fucking pitfall of game overs. I just can't remember if you can fail at this part or not. I think I would the imagine way it's so. scripted and programmed, you can't. I would imagine so if you just have the wrong fucking camera's uh, visual. Mm. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. No, I don't think it's that. That's the thing you see. It's like, as much as it, as it, as it looks, it's not time sensitive. You know, kind of way. You are just basically like, like checking the screens. You basically set up a flag here, set up a flag there, and just let the let everything, the sequence of actions go from there. Case in point here now. Top right camera is kicking off. Who knew that the Wi-Fi in uh, Beyond would be this bad, eh? Must be all them cosmic rays. I do know that Ed is kind of like looking lovingly into what is presumably meant to be a hidden camera. He's like, hi, have you found my son yet? I'm so lonely. <laughs> Please save my son. <laughs> my boy. Please hmm. someone find my boy. My boy! Yeah, I say we, we, really, we literally can't afford any more casualties from Vice. There's only three of us left. <laughs> and, and when you, and when you, technically it's two. No, I presume they all have like earpieces or something. Like it's either that or the camera is physically talking to Ed. Yeah. <laughs> Which would probably give the game away, to be honest. No, they have the earpieces, definitely. Yeah. Need to be. Yeah. Oop. No, does anything strange on the uh, camera tree? Mm hmm. In the background. Oh, yeah. yeah. The uh, play the let's player doesn't so far. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, hmm. So he's just checking the watcher going, this doesn't seem to be right. Uh... There's something really, uh, like, really funny aesthetic of like a CRT monitor having the, the scan line. Just uh, one of those things that just doesn't exist anymore. Nothing bad could happen here by doing that. Definitely not a, a sign of uh, bad things to come. And he's gone. But don't they've actually I realize they they've after fixing the um the wax uh, statues of the of the police knots there, considering the last time we were in here it was like they were beheaded. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. And the place was full of mosquitoes as well. They haven't very smart I... to tarp over the uh, the coral though that we blew up. So still no sign of them, except for that little tease earlier on. 
And Mar Meryl's still alive. So, where is he hiding now? Doesn't help as well that, like, if they are behind them, like, the giant, like, heads of, like, Ed and Meryl are kind of blocking. <laughs> How did, like, no one else in this, uh, in, in this museum finds it strange that, like, a 20th century astronaut is carrying around, is walking around with a child, just randomly? Well, we've already... Like, assume that they're just ignoring a guy apparently cosplaying. Like, as I a, mean, everything cooking goes, as goes, yeah. So, So we're, we're, we're hoping that Meryl can get there first. And they're gone. It is the kind of conceit of the, of the graphics as well, where like they just kind of just fade out of existence. It was like, like, they couldn't just say, oh, they've gone to this corner here. But then, of course, that's not the... The fun part is then seeing them appear on screen just anywhere, you know? Right, come on, Ed. Come on. Turn around, Ed, for fuck's sake. Well, oh, maybe he doesn't... Oh, there he is. <laughs> like he's literally front and center. He's like, hi, I have your child. Come and get me. Like, props to Redwood, in fairness. Like, if he is still rocking around in the biker suit and he's able to quick change into an astronaut gear, that's, um, that's pretty fucking impressive, uh, like, change in there. Oh, he doesn't do anything half-assed. No, that's for sure. Here we go. This is the end of the cutscene now. Oh, shit. Oh, Ed. Ed, you're gonna die, Ed. Ed! <laughs> <laughs> if he dies I literally call that from the get go I mean it is a trope isn't it like please please let him say I'm getting too old for this shit <laughs> <I'm gonna die. laughs> as tradition states <laughs> yes yes <laughs> Emotional investment! Emotional damage! <laughs> Too old for this shit. Uh, three years from retirement. Uh. Nah, it has to be even closer. It has to be like, oh, it's my last day. Well, maybe he's not going to die then, Dennis. If he's only two, if he did say he's like he just wants two more years and he gets his pension, so he's not that far away from retirement. He's on the wind down though. If that counts, like well, I mean, he's like, zero two days years from away retirement. from retirement. Zero hmm. days if he just dies, because I mean that's forced retirement. <laughs> not the man <laughs> speaking, yes, that would be the that would be the case. Yes, I can't the really ultimate, enjoy that though. That's the ultimate. That's I'm I'm retiring from fucking life. <laughs> <laughs> So, the good news is we found your son. Bad news is you're on life support. 
More bad news. If you leave, we're gonna replace him. <laughs> we we got a we got another token black just waiting in the wing. He's ready to go. We got he clone can, ready to go. He can play bass, guitar, and everything. So, I mean, going with the go go with the 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 trend of the, of the game so far, like I'm surprised he hasn't like you know been carted off to the moon for spare parts, <laughs> but. I suppose that whole part of the uh, economy is a little bit shaky right now, now that we've, like, you know, presumably exposed the entire thing. I don't think we have yet. I think we're still building our case against Tokugawa, so we still have to, and considering that, like, literally as we touch down back and beyond, we jump straight into a kidnapping case, so. So we haven't had a chance to actually debrief yet. I do like that even though with the um the kind of faraway graphics there, like, you know, everyone else is looking mournfully at this tomb that he's in, whereas Jonathan is moody. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's his only fucking emotional state. Yeah, to yeah, be fair. The man the man was born to brood. Like every good action hero. Just get him a perch so he can start looking over the sea. Yeah. <laughs> Have a sorrowful guitar solo playing. Yeah, yeah. I do. Have, it, it's it, it's one of those kind of funny things because like the the on YouTube you can get all these kind of like uh, uh, audio mixes and stuff like that, like and different like genre radios and stuff. And the synthwave one is a thumbnail of of uh, Jonathan from Police Knots, like from the from the start of the game. And I think the funny thing is that like. If you like ask anybody that listens to that to those mixes, they probably have no idea where that comes from. But like game wise or who the character is, it's just the aesthetic just takes this, <laughs> that box, you know, kind of way. Everybody wants to be Jonathan. Pretty much. So yeah, we got like we've got two people in intensive care. Let's see who dies first. Choose your destiny. So much so, for those people watching at home, our own Jonathan changed his name. That's not his actual name. He changed. He was such a big fan. He changed his name to Jonathan. That's true, actually. Yeah, I was. I was previously. His real name is Norbert. Well, well, I was named. Or I was. Uh, or Dilbert. Depends. Dilbert. Yeah, that's it. You, you got your facts wrong there. Or Dougal. No. <laughs> I feel it's bad for anyone actually called Dougal before Father Ted. Like, was that, was the like no, I doubt there was many people called fucking Dougal. You never know. Like, have you many Dougals? Exactly. No. <laughs> like, in the same way that, like, you know, like, the, like, I saw the Simpsons like using kind of like, Greek names as well, like uh, like Homer and Cletus. Like they are now like ostensibly linked to Homer. Simpson they would and... still at least I could at least say they were possibly a name. Dougal, I don't know. Hmm. I can't ever imagine somebody looking at the ch at a child and going, "Oh, he's beautiful." What we call him, Dougal. Like Dougal. <laughs> <laughs> Like a Unless they look at the child and go, oh, I fucking hate that kid. <laughs> That's a stupid looking baby. Call him Dougal. Yeah, call him Dougal, dumbass. <laughs> I want him to kill himself before he's out of primary school. Dougal. <laughs> <laughs> you let Dougal do his homework? You let Dougal do his homework? That was burnt out. <laughs> And now we have a uh, doctor speak to see what the hell is wrong with Karen. Fucking Karens. Karens everywhere. And yeah, we kind of we have kind of heard about this from from herself earlier on, but this is the doctor also reinforcing that like it's the uh, it's the environment that's causing this, which means presumably a lot of other people, basically, his bone their bone marrow has just stopped working. It's always the environment's is... fault. That's why I'm trying to kill it. Hmm. Well. Okay. We might have got the wrong end of the stick again, Dennis. No, no. I know exactly what you mean. Fucking environment. And yeah. That's... 
See, it's kind of supposed to be the opposite way around. But if we kind of like treat the environment better. No, no, I know what you meant. Us. I'm, I'm, I'm contacting BP as we speak. There's gonna be another, another little spill. <laughs> <laughs> Those seagulls are looking quite clean lately. <laughs> It's time they learn their fucking place in the pecking order. Uh, uh, very good. That's very clever. He's here all weeks, folks. Uh, Dennis Murphy is available for bookings. <laughs> <laughs> As well, ring announcer and dad joke uh, specialist uh, whenever it suits. Yeah, any, any climate deniers? <laughs> I definitely will not do your entire event with a hard tinge of fucking satire. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Dennis, I hear Van Morris needs a new PA. It's yeah. okay because you, you, you're too stupid to realize it, so it's all right. <laughs> That's, true, yeah. That's also the funniest part is that like, some people just don't realize they're being fucking led by the garden yeah. path. Like, That's the funniest thing. So, uh, the other little bit we're hearing from the doctor that we didn't hear from Karen is that essentially. Like in real life, if you have a, like a bone marrow transplant or anything, or donor like that, you can't have the same basically and like group of like it's like the same blood group essentially. But mm -hmm. this one is the same, it's, it's more family, it's a genetic match more than anything else. So, seeing that Karen, um, really much like has no family left, she doesn't have any donors left. So, Karen's kind of fucked essentially. She has no like no one's going to uh. Fix her bone marrow for her, unfortunately. And it's also, and obviously, with like, you know, potential like uh, just permutations generally in genetics, it had to be like a literally a one in a million chance for someone to have the same type as her. Which is, uh, which I'm not mistaken, is the same case for us as well, because like I said, there's only so much genetic data, data to go around. So you'd eventually have a bone marrow like donor for you if you're in the same situation but that's also like assuming that this person wants to give you bone marrow because it is a very unpleasant procedure yeah my brother had bone marrow taken for a test mm. my fucking god it takes it like did they take it from the the femur don't they or from the i ankle? i was very very young but he they definitely took it from his leg because he was like on crutches for ages after yeah they basically hollow out the bone yeah, the bone marrow. Fuck, yeah i don't know again i was very young yeah but he had he had cancer at the time so they had to do it but um, mm. they, yeah, I just remember him being in a lot of fucking pain because of this bone marrow thing. Yeah, and then like the the bone is like permanently frail from that point on. Because I so remember like, thinking, but you don't have that type of cancer. He's like, yeah, but that's not the that's not the point. Because he had Hodgkin's lymphoma. Right. But, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, the, but that's but, a blood that's a blood cancer, so they need a marrow. Yeah. Yeah, but I, you know, being a kid and all that, all you think is that's also one of the ones where you get um surface tumors mm. like so you know tumors visible yeah. um mm. so like when you're a kid that, that's just that's the cancer you know, you know like you know it's, yeah i get that, that thing I it's not that. you know it's very visible yeah So yeah, there's still a lot more techno babble, but um, but essentially, I think the doctor is saying that like pretty much everyone on Beyond has their um, has their like all their information is there, and there's nobody on the colony that can uh, that can save her. So they've already looked at that potential uh, potential chance. So and even without that, like they can't look at a list like personal listings because Tokugawa has it. Mm, actually, there's there's my answer there. The only person who can who has the same one is Gates Becker. <laughs> it was like, yeah, probably not gonna be able to ask him for that somehow. Yeah, this is the interesting thing that they're taking, like, this is a basically a marker that, like, is supposed to be in, in bone marrow. So it is kind of a guess or a presumption that this is actually the medical technology can detect this in blood. I love the fact that the syringe just sounded like it was pouring a cup of tea. 
今は採取した骨髄細胞を人工培養して5、6倍に増やすことができるようになりましたから、献血程度で済みます。ジョナタうん。おどうしたメレルはい、でも、まあ、おジョナタマークが星の絵を描いてくれたの。He's drawn a picture of the perps. Mm -hmm. He wants you to see. Well, as you know, it is quite unusual for Mark to try and make contact and communication, so. I like that he's made Redwood look like Xenomorph, which yeah. I think is actually. Quite That's what I was thinking there myself. I was like, what the fuck did we get? Like a fucking <laughs> crossover? Yeah. But it's the flower that's really uh, throwing people off. But it's bright purple. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is yeah, this is where we're hearing the full story from uh We've heard already that like Ed saved Mark from uh from this basically drug shootout. Oh fuck yeah, okay. Yeah. But Ed didn't tell us the whole story. ナクチュドクシャだった。元APのフローズマンだ。うん。そう。そのナクチュドクシャの名前はリドリー・レッド。いや。イーブズ・レッドウッド。現APのナクチュドクシャの名前はリドリー・レッド。いや。イーブズ